So, this is the Ludwig Ogren quiz. 1,580 people took it, and it had questions that true fans should know the answers to. This quiz, at the end of the day, is made for the real ones. Feel free, if you didn't get to play when it was live, to play along at home. And write down the answers you think would be correct, and I'll let you know at the end if you're right or wrong. First question. Which is the correct spelling of these emotes? Should probably be, what is the correct spelling? That's probably bad English. But that's alright, I'm an English major, I'm allowed to fuck it up. Now you might be asking yourself, why does this matter? If this quiz is about Ludwig, why do I have to know how emotes are spelled? Uh, cause it's how I talk in real life. Alright? That's how I walk around. So if we ever go together to a bar, I'm gonna be poggin'. I'm gonna be lol wing And if some shit happens, I might be come on bruhing. The four answers were these as follows. But there was only one correct one. And I actually really only care about the middle one. For the love of God, if you ever come in my chat, YouTube frogs, I'm talking to you. If you ever come in my chat, never, all cap pog. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Correct answer was four, the green one. Come on, bro, lowercase c. Now, I think a lot of people who did this cheated. That's okay, though. Still, over 50%. I'm proud of you. 18% of you guys thought it was POG all caps. All right, whatever. I'm over it. I'm over it. Please, for the love of God, get your shit together. Now we start getting to the Ludwig-based questions. And this one's interesting. Which game took me the longest to complete? The vote for this question is really tight, but the answer is not. The game that took me the longest took me double the time it took me to do the others. Jump King, the original, took me about 30 hours. Jump King DLC took me like 35, 40. Getting Over took me about 30. Pogo Stuck took me 75 hours. I mean, the plurality got it, but it not the majority. How'd you not know? You can literally go to my YouTube and you look up Ludwig Hardest Game. And it, it's one of my most viewed videos. One of the few videos I have that peaked a million views. And the thumbnail. Literally says 75 hours later. It's when I first discovered clickbait, but I wasn't that good at it. So my face is kind of small and you can't really see it. But it's still actually a pretty good thumbnail. 75 hours. I banned Fabian because he lulled W'd because I fell. And I got my feelings hurt. I was I was baby rage banning people. Next question. This is kind of a this is a freebie. Which year of Madden was I forced to play after losing a bet? Now I will say not enough people got this right. The answer, of course, is Madden 05, which I did play, which did pretty poorly in viewership, but you guys asked for it. Haywire linked it to me during an Amazon stream one time, and for some fucking reason, it stuck. And now I get people in my chat trying to recreate the magic of Madden 05, trying to get me to play Ape Escape 2, which I'm never gonna play! Every time you guys have ever asked me to play a game, it's gone bad. Anyway. I sang the male solo of this song that garnered public acclaim for the execution of the first note. I don't think I've listened to it on stream in full in a while. How many views does it have, I wonder? 42k? Fuck. Jesus. Alright, next question! This one- alright, some of these questions are kind of chump checks. But I wanted to test if you guys really knew me. So I threw in a bit of a bait. I started playing Smash competitively with this game. And this one, you guys fucked up big. I did not start with Super Smash Bros. Melee. I started with Smash 4. And only 10.8% got it right. 80% don't even know me. I only got into Melee because I watched the doc. And I went to one tournament in New Hampshire. And I was like, yeah, this game seems tight. So anyway, 80% of you already failed the quiz. Now this one, this one's interesting. What is my real name? Is it actually Ludwig? No. My actual first name is Anders. No, I'm fucking lying. It's Ludwig. That was an easy one. That was a gimme. I can't even pretend to lie. Next question. How tall am I? This question I put in just so some people who were 10 out of 10 would lose a point. It was like forcing you to admit it. Because you guys are all sundere. And I force you to admit you like me by saying my height. 5'11 wasn't on there because I'm not 5'11, so it wouldn't make sense. What's interesting, and here's the fact of the matter, boys. All right. Very clearly, I'm obviously six feet tall. Okay. True. Yes, I am. 
What's interesting is the second highest one was 6'3". <laughs> That's flattering. You guys are simps for me or something. 5'2 was the third highest. 188 of you. Not fucking 5'2. Next question. I was fired from all of these jobs except for one. Now this one actually has the, uh, the most divisive answers. So let me go through. I've been fired or let go from three jobs. Three jobs, just three? That's not that many. That's not that many. Now, I think I've only ever had about six jobs in my life, not including streaming. So, 50%, I feel like, is a pretty good ratio. Aren't you 24? That's besides the point. That's not relevant, you know? That's, that's not bad. I got fired from three jobs in 24 years. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's only like one every eight years. <laughs> I'll start with the Wine and Spirits magazine. That was a job. That was my first job when I moved to LA. I moved to LA because I got a job interview, which is not a very smart thing to do. But my lease ended in Arizona, so I lived with my sister. I'm really good at in-person interviews because you just kind of fake it till you make it. It's basically streaming. So I, I crushed it. I got the job, but my skill set was journalism, like writing shit. And the job was me uploading stories to the website with a website created in, I'm not kidding you, 1999. And it was like this shitty ass CSS ugly fucking website. And like if you wanted to get a picture to be in the center but not have words around it, you had to like put in the code for that. So my job basically consisted of me Googling how do I do this and then doing it. And they thought I was good at it for a month. But it's only because I was young and knew how to use Google. And none of the other people did because they were all 40. Here's the real kicker. The first month went great. Because the person who was supposed to be my boss was on maternity leave. She came back and she was a fucking bitch. <laughs> she had it out for me. She was not having it. I showed up at like 9.05 once. And she was like, where were you? Because I lived like maybe a mile away. I was like, there was a bit of traffic and this is and my dumbass. i moved oh my god this is embarrassing i bought or rented an apartment that was a mile away from this job i literally got the apartment because of the job never do that and if you do do that never tell your employer so tensions are high with this boss and then one day they asked me to put this story on the website and it was like 4 30 and they needed it up by the end of the day but it had a bunch of pictures and it was really stressful and annoying to get the pictures to be like centered. And so I finally did it. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I did it. I go home. I come back the next day. And like, there's this weird vibe in the office. They're like, hey, Ludwig, can you, can you give us the password to all of the accounts? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, I can give you the password. Great, great. Yeah, we just need to change it. I was like, sure, security. I was like, hey, do you guys need me to work on a story? Is there any stories I should work on? They look over and they're like, no. <laughs> no, no stories today. No stories at all. I was like, okay, cool. Somebody comes in, they're like, hey Ludwig, um, can you meet with the boss in HR? At this point in my life, I'd never been fired. So I was like, oh, sure, why not? And then I go to the office and they're just sitting there at the desk, arms, have a seat, Ludwig. I'm like, okay, I'll sit. Sure, no problem. And then they lay it on me. So Ludwig, you've been with us about six weeks and uh, well, there's no easy way to say this. We're letting you go. And I was shook. I had no fucking clue it was coming. I seriously thought I was crushing it. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, I got to work on a story. I thought I might get a fucking ra I was ready for some good shit. Nope. I was like, w w but why? They're like, well, uh, you fucked up this story and, uh, and you know what? Actually, it's our fault. We feel like the role we carved out for you wasn't really all set. The way I fucked up the story, so they had pictures and then pictures had bylines. And it would be like, featured in this picture is Eric, Jessica, and Robert. And I just put the pictures in the order that I received them, in the bylines in the order that I received them. But 
apparently they sent them out of order. So the bylines did not match with the pictures. And it was kind of obvious if you looked at it, one would be like, featured here are Eric, Robert, and John. It would just be like one girl sipping wine. So it didn't make sense. And, uh, but I just, I just, I just, I'm just dumb ape man trying to fucking click, clack, click, clack. Kyle's that type. So yeah, that's, that's what got me fired. That was the first time I got fired. Second time was Snapchat. Cause Snapchat offered me $20 an hour and it was full time. And my job at Snapchat is a, is a content moderator for French and English cues. But basically if you ever post to like a public thing, the Olympics, Super Bowl or public story, someone has to moderate it to make sure it's not against their t uh, TOS. So, uh, I was like, all right, cool. It was easy. I kind of lied about being fluent in French, but they still gave me the job because I passed the test. I kind of asked my mom to help. Thank you, mom. I appreciate it. I'm actually not that fluent in French, but because, because you have to read and write, I wasn't that good at it, but whatever, whatever. I got the job. I got the job. That's all that matters. I got the fucking job. And it was kind of a hype job because you were able to work from home after the first month. They gave you a laptop. Look, I was really good because basically you'd have a bunch of hotkeys. You'd press like this key if there was titty and this key if it was like surgery and this key if it was all right. And then this key if it was 18 plus and this key if it, and you had all these keys. So you just be like, click, clack, click, and then like enter, click, click, click. And I could do like fucking 200 an hour if I wanted. And I did for the first month. And then month two hit. And look, they make you work at all hours of the day. It's a rotating schedule. You don't get to pick your hours, but sometimes they'd have you working at 4 a.m. to noon. 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. And so occasionally I would do this thing where I would wake up and I'd work for an hour and then I'd chill for like 30 minutes. And my boss never came up to me. And one day I was like, hey, do you guys ever like check the metrics to like see how we compare to other people? And they're like, we actually have no way to get that information. And I was like, bingo, <laughs> we're in. So next fucking month, the next six weeks, I'm big chilling. I brought, I, 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 I caught, they had so much free shit. So you got a laptop. I would ask for like a keyboard. I asked for a second monitor. I would watch a movie every single day at work and I have it up on the side. I would still go through if I was in the office, but if I wasn't in the office and I had shitty hours, your boy slept through some shifts. I ain't going to front. I big time slept through some shifts. I had a guilt in me, so I would work for a couple hours, and I worked faster than average, and I knew the average, but... <laughs> and if you think it was bad that I would sleep through shifts, that's not even the worst part. I, I would... I, I don't know if I can get in trouble for this. I would roll up with two Trader Joe's recyclable bags, and they had, like, if you ever worked at a startup or any Fortune 500 company, they had the, they had the fucking juicer fridges that had, like, LaCroix, coconut water fucking baby bells cream cheese and it was like i was at the fucking grocery store on an empty stump and i would fill up the fucking bags dude i filled them up to the brim they never specifically said there's a limit and technically i'm working from home and i'm still working so i feel like i'm allowed to have some drink was your boy working on 20 dollars an hour in fucking california with a thousand dollars of rent every month yes he was Yes, he was. Did they stop doing unlimited overtime because they were hemorrhaging money and they cut off that program completely? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. This is all, by the way, this is all hypothetical. This is all by, then maybe this didn't happen. Mid-April hits and we have a group chat with all of the people who work in uh, my department. So we were in a group chat, April 10th hits and then somebody's like, yo, anyone else just get let go? And everyone's like, it's like the fucking Mr. Krabs meme, like what? One kid gets let go. They're like, oh, shit, that's crazy. That's crazy. There are like 50 people who worked in my department. Over the next week, half of them were gone. It was cut down to 25, but your boy was still there. The manager at the time, and he's like, so you guys know we had to have some cutbacks. Do you think that this department will be fine and uh, most of you guys will be chill? Uh, but we did have to cut back a bit. Uh, just continue work as normal. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And then April 20th hits. Literally April 20th. I'm not even memeing. I get an email and it was like, hey, the whole entire team's being disbanded. Starting immediately. What? Are you serious? 
Like, not even because I fucked up. Not even because I slept on company time and stole fucking hundreds of dollars worth of LaCroix. They just disbanded the company. I was smooth sailing. Ah, oh, they fucked me. Everybody in the group chats I write, there's nothing we can do about it because we're contracted employees. That's how they get you, by the way. They'll just hire you as a contractor so then they can treat you like dirt. So anyway, that's all the fucking prelude to my job that I eventually got at IQ Vapes. Now, if you don't know, I was a vapes salesman. I was the head of marketing. I was basically looking for jobs that were in the area. You know, I, I asked around and looked and looked, and I saw head of marketing, and I thought, I'm not qualified, but I'll apply. And I, much to my surprise, got an interview. And I show up to the interview. I was kind of feeling myself. I had my suit. I'm a great schmoozer. In-person interviews are my thing. And the guy's talking to me, and I'm having killer answers. At this time, I was working with the Reeds, and I had set up the online merch store for the Reeds, and we had sold about like 20K worth of merch in the first month, which is pretty fucking bug. So I told the guy, and they, it blew him away. He's like, so, Ludwig, how much would it take for you to be happy at this job? And I was not prepared for this question. If you ever fucking interview, prepare. Look up how much the fucking other jobs in the area are worth, that job title is worth, but I know shit. So I look him dead in the eye, and I said the biggest number I could think of. I go, $50,000. And he looks back at me like he just got punched. He's like, Phew. and then I leave. I'm like, fuck, I fucked it. I fucked it. I'm an idiot. Fuck, Ludwig. Should have said 40. I get a call. I go back in, and he's like, hey, I'll be honest, we think you're great. We're willing to offer you $45,000 a year and 10% of all sales on the website. And I was like, but I didn't want to wear it on my face. So I was like, okay, look, all right. And they're like, okay, but you know, after three months, we'll review and we'll see if we need to increase your pay. And I was like, that sounds fair. <laughs> I got the job, 45K, and I was the head of marketing at a vape company. Now, I don't vape. I hate a vape and I'm big coughs, but I feel like there's some shit I can do because they literally don't even have a website up and running. So I start working and uh, I start selling vapes, which I will say, look, do not vape. It's not good for you. I think it was unethical what I did. I just was working my job. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't regret it because honestly, it let me make enough money that I could uh, do streaming on the side, but I poured my heart into it. I did the best I could. And so I set up the website. And for the first, because I started in July, six months, sales went up every single month. Not by like a little, like like 50%. And then I had this big idea because I had a few failed marketing plans. One of them I've talked about on stream before. It was called uh, Iconic, but Iconic because the, <laughs> yeah, okay. The vape company was IQ. And so it was Iconic, but it was spelled IQ. And then I would take famous figures throughout history smoking and I would instead photoshop a vape into their mouth and I had a whole pitch and let me tell you my boss loved it and then I ended up telling Ben SW and Atrioc about it and they fucking laughed me out the room I felt really disheartened and they're like how are you gonna get the rights and I was like that's all to say I had one good idea my big idea was a subscription program that would wane wean Reduce the amount of nicotine you would intake. Basically, it would be subscription. Every month, you would get shipped nicotine juice. You'd put it in your vape. After a couple months, it would automatically lower the percentage. You would add five different levels of nicotine. And the idea of it is you would start this program in hopes of eventually quitting vaping. I had this whole pitch at this meeting. And I even had an influencer locked. Phase fucking banks. I would have been phased the fuck up. He was going to be the guy. He was going to exclusively vape this. He's going to talk about how he was reducing his nicotine intake over periods of time. Alyssa Violet was going to come back when he didn't cheat on Alyssa Violet. Rice gum was going to come back when rice gum wasn't fucking. Well, I guess he was always a laughing stock. I'll even show you. It's still on the website. It's still there. I made that image. And then I pitched to the CEO. And the CEO was this Chinese dude whose father was rich as fuck. And he was like, fuck it, I'll make a vape company. And I'm pitching it to him, and I have all the numbers. Did my research. Made up half the shit, but it's all right. I feel like most marketing is making up half the shit because there's no way to really prove anything at the end of the day. 
And then he hits me with this. Ludwig, that was the best presentation I've ever seen. Not even fucking with you. He said that. And I was like, phase the fuck up, baby. He was like, stop phasing. Stop, stop phasing the fuck up. I was like, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. But I don't think our product is ready. And I was like, oh. He wasn't wrong. They had a lot of problems with the products. But that's all to say that they said no to the deal. They thought the product would fail. And so from then on, I posted. I was a big enough deal that I had a graphic designer hired full time. And I would just tell her to do shit and put it on the website. But your boy would go in and he would go to Twitch.tv and I would just absorb information like some fucking alien. And I'd be like, this good stream, this bad stream. I watched every streamer under the sun. You can name any of them. I watched them all. I would work on content ideas. I would like plan them out. I would go to the gym during lunch. I would go into the office at 10 a.m. I started going out at 11 and the boss was like, hey, I know your salary, but maybe 10 because the other people are starting to question it. I was like, cool, 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 cool. And then things started to pick up. The YouTube was doing better. I was, or the Twitch was doing better. I had like about 200 average viewers. And I was like, all right, I'm going to leave this company when I have $10,000 in savings. And $1,500 before I hit 10K, I walk into the office. Man, I don't really suspect anything. It seems to be a regular day. And my boss, who I'm really tight with, and we go go-karting sometimes, we go to Canes, and we have a really good relationship, was like, hey, could you give me the passwords for all the uh, social media accounts? And I'm like, sure, yeah, fuck it. And then I see my graphic designer go into the office with the CEO of the American office. And I was like, well, and all of a sudden, I'm getting flashbacks. So then I worked at the, the fucking Wine and Spirits magazine. I'm like, wait. Wait a second. And I get called into the office. And the head honcho, the boss of everything, the CEO of the American Division is like, no easy way to say this, but we're going to have to let you go. And I was like, oh, not again. Three times. Three times in six months. Are you out of your mind? Actually, it's more like a year at that point. And I was like, oh, fuck. And here's the real catch. Same as Snapchat. They didn't fire me because I was coasting. Because I was watching Twitch. They actually didn't give a shit because I was still getting the work done. Even though I was making somebody else doing it. But that's pretty much all managers at any large enough company. I was just doing it on a smaller scale. They fired me because the American office was hemorrhaging money. And the Chinese office was selling like hotcakes over in the Asia demographic and the Europe demographic. But the US... Bleh. And I think over the next three months, they fired a bunch of salespeople. And over the next six... The whole office was gone. I talked with my boss because I had a really good relationship with him for like an hour. Because I actually wasn't that stressed because I, I was going to go full-time anyway. It just happened to be $1,500 earlier than I wanted to. I was kind of hyped for it. And he was like, yeah, you'll be fine. I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. He's like, if I have any piece of advice for you, it's get as much pussy as you can while you're young. What? <laughs> like, yeah, I just wish I had more sex. It's so much harder now. I was like, yeah. Tells me this whole fucking story. He's like, yeah, I signed up for Tinder. Uh, but I was using a different guy's pictures. I'm like, ooh. I'm getting fired. What's... He's like, yeah, I thought I'd use a picture of this guy. I was like, some fucking super buff guy? Because uh, it, it got me more matches. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's fucking insane. But yeah, it, that probably did that. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I actually went on a date with a girl. I was like, you showed up? He's like, yeah. Yeah, I showed up. And I said, uh, hey, it's me. She was kind of upset. But then she was like... Hey, do you want me to give you advice on Tinder? And so I asked her. I asked her to help me out. And so somehow, my boss, as he's firing me, is telling me a story about how he catfished a girl and then got her to set up his Tinder. So they took pictures together. They were, like, at the fucking beach. And then she was like, are you in for a relationship or you just want to have sex? He's like, I just want to fuck. She was like, just swipe right on everyone. More matches, the better. He's like, yeah. So I just swipe every day. I'll just swipe. And uh, I've been fucking hella girls. I was like, that's great, man. That's great. He's like, yeah, so you should be having more sex. I was like, cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then I got fired. And then that was the last job I got fired from. And I had to make the decision that weekend if I was going to go full time. And I was like, fuck it, we ball. Turns out things have worked out so far. It might all crash and burn. This is the longest story aside I've ever fucking had. This is all to say the correct answer is I didn't get fired from Apple. <laughs> Back to the quiz. That's the correct answer is I didn't get fired from Apple. But I was going to be. Story time. <laughs> At Apple, 
Apple, if you don't know, has this college program where they hire kids who are in college to be a part of their Apple Care team. And they pay decently well, and they have all the Apple benefits like stock options, 401k. Super recommend it if you're okay with doing support calls. Support calls will make you want to tear out your eyes from your sockets after enough time. Nobody can do it forever. Some people can only last a fucking month. I lasted two and a half years. And basically all you do every day is you take a call and then somebody will have a problem, probably some old person, about how their phone's not doing some shit. 95% of the time, a hard reset will do it. And Apple, as opposed to Snapchat, knew every fucking metric of everything you've ever done. How long would your calls last? How long would you wait in between calls to pick up a new call? What was your rating? Customer satisfaction on calls. It was very Big Brother-esque. And then you had a manager who would let you know about these stats, which ones are lacking compared to the average of the group, which ones are better. Maybe your calls are taking too long. You need to do them quicker. Maybe there's some better steps. And after two years, I got really good at my job. Actually, no meme. I was, when I left the job, ninth. I was ranked ninth in the college program, which was 2,500 people. Because I had a super sick average call time. And my customer satisfaction, those are the main two criteria, was also baller. It was like almost 100%. So I was killing it. But I also, how I accidentally got top 10 of the college program. I also knew how to game the system. And I didn't really take advantage, but sometimes occasionally, very occasionally, for the first two years, you would have the dream call. And the dream call is when you help someone out, you solve their problem, then the they're done, but they don't hang up. So everything's good. You did the call, but they didn't hang up. And generally, you're not supposed to hang up unless it's been like a few minutes. So I would just let the call run. Maybe a 10-minute call went 30 minutes. Maybe it'd go an hour. My record, two hours, 43 minutes. Two and a half hours of which just never hung up. <laughs> But I, but I do it very rarely, all right? Because I needed to keep up my stats. And I would do that, and everything went great, and I never really had a problem until, Pepe hand warning, my girlfriend who I was living with at the time and I broke up. <clears throat> and I've been working at this job for two years, and you can only handle so much 30-minute calls and people being mad. And then when you add that fucking just being sad, Watching entire seasons of animes in a weekend. Beating the entirety of Breath of the Wild in 36 hours without sleeping. It gets harder to pick up the phone and dial right after doing a call and being all chip and cheery. So I got a little bit lazy. My patience had worn out like fucking d d d gone. Like smooth tires on a fucking car after drifting. Imagine. I am a race car, and I'm drifting around the track, and now my tires are smooth, and my friction is gone. But now there's risks of crashing. I would get a call with some 55-year-old boomer, and he'd start yelling. I'd fucking throw the headset. i just walk away. I'll walk away for 20 minutes. I'd be like, fuck that. I'm not dealing with it. Be a lot more times that I'd do those no-hang-up calls. One time my boss is like, hey, I got this call to listen to. It uh, looks like it went an hour and a half. Uh, let's just take a look and see why it went so long. I was like, yeah, let's do that. So we hop on. She's like, all right, this is the call. And we listen, and then it goes radio silent. She's like, hmm, that's weird. Let me check my program. And she has a program that lets her check, like, the radio frequency that I didn't know about to see if there was noise happening. But during that exact fucking week where that call happened, the program wasn't working. I was like, oh, fuck. But I had another problem. Ignore having to deal with difficult people or taking advantage of the call times. I wasn't able to sometimes get up to answer the calls. I worked from home. They sent me a computer. But getting out of bed to do it was like so, it was like so sad. I'd say, I think how a lot of people feel, a lot of streamers feel after a while, about hitting the start stream button. So I was late. Because Apple, again, they track everything. They have an occurrence system. Every time you're late by 0 to 15 minutes, you're fine. 15 to 30, it's 0.25 occurrences. 30 to an hour is like 0.5. Over an hour, it's like a whole occurrence. You hit 5, you're out. They expire after 90 days. 
And I was on the edge for like six months, barely keeping it up, trying to keep the job. It was my senior year until I graduated in May, two weeks before graduation, or like one week before graduation, I, I fucked up, missed the alarm. I was late, too many occurrences. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. If you're late, you're late. Fucking, that's it. I was pretty tight with my boss, and she was like, yeah, they're going to review it. You'll likely get fired. And I was like, oh. But then an idea struck. Because obviously you can see, I didn't get fired from this job. I was like, what if I quit? And she was like, you could quit. And I was like, I quit? And she's like, I just need your reason for quitting. And I was like, focus on school before graduation. And she was like, well, okay, sir. You have now quit Apple.com. And so technically, I didn't get fired. I was still actually able to use him as a reference. And I did to get the wine and spirits job because I quit. I didn't get fired. They didn't bring up me being later. Shit. I was able to flex being 9 out of 25 hundo. Three. Because I quit Apple. So, fucking most long-winded story time of all time. I was not fired from Apple. But at some point along this journey, I started streaming. I, it was one specific day where I was like, I'm going to take this serious. I'm going to stream full time. It was not the first day I'd started streaming, but it was when I decided to take it seriously. A lot of you guys guessed incorrectly. In fact, majority did. February 16th, 2018 is when I got fired from iVape IQ. But I started streaming May 16th, 2018. And I did fucking, like, you, you, I can show you the stats. This was my first month of streaming. May 16th, I made $150 my first month. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, we're in this bitch. I had 43 subs. And then here is the final question. This is the percentage of people who watch my YouTube videos but aren't subscribed. Is it 95%? 15%? No, it's the middle. That's right, boys. 35% of the people who watch my videos on YouTube aren't subscribed. What's up with that? It doesn't cost you money. Like, Kalo fucking just dropped $25. It's free. Also, I looked at the stats the other day, and it said you're below average on people who ring the notification bell, who have notifications for all videos. I don't ever plug it. I thought you guys would just do it, but now Twitch is making, or YouTube's making fun of me. 